Nate Norman in his seventh season played at Notre Dame, played for the Carolina Railhawks for the guy sitting next to him, Martin Rennie, who was the coach at the Carolina Railhawks, who then got hired to coach Vancouver in MLS. He then became the coach at Indy 11, decided to take some time off, went overseas. Nate Norman called him up, needed a little help, thought it was only going to be a year, but Martin Rennie has been a fixture next to Nate Norman. Already Notre Dame speed and a big time save from Leah Freeman, the Oregon transfer. Now in her second year. And you saw fantastic extension out to the left. Fingertips save, good strong hand out to prevent Notre Dame from taking that early lead. What a phenomenal start for Notre Dame as they have the corner kick. It's a well-weighted ball from Chukwu. She's fantastic for the national team up in Canada. Sent in, and the header there for Notre Dame, so two great opportunities. It's only fitting that Izzy Engel with the 11 goals and one assist had the breakaway. Good speed onto the left foot. Oh, it's on target. That's going to be tucked into that far post. Brilliant from Engel. She could feel the Groff closing her down. So this summer, out in Frisco, Texas, Izzy Engel made the ECNL national selection game. She was named the MVP with multiple goals representing the Minnesota Thunder Academy. She interviewed her live as part of the broadcast after the game. and. Her family was there as well as I say hello to the Engel family and she talked about going to Notre Dame and look at her now 11 goals and one assist in her rookie campaign. And Engel will try to run it down. Engel. This little step over right at the edge of the box but Groff she's a fifth year she's not going to fall for that stayed with it when Engel showed a little too much of the ball able to put it out reorganize the defense. Notre Dame 10, 1, and 3. Three ties that you feel like if they could run them back, perhaps they would find the three points as they tied Boston College, NC State, and Louisville. Two going the other way as they also have that ability. Trying to find Maggie Graham, who's sitting on nine goals and five assists. What a breakout. Speaking of the breakout, here's Engel again. Engel denied oh. by Freeman. This game is going to be off the charts, back and forth. Chukwu with the rebound. Yeah, Chukwu, 29 goals with the Canada Youth National Team. Backing up your statement, Matt Stradley. Those are big time numbers. She beat the uh, youth record set by Sinclair. That's a fairly popular name north of the border. Mm. She's one of the all time greats, Christine Sinclair. It's a brilliant ball over the top. I mean, weighted perfectly. Engel, she's going to finish this more often than not. But gosh, Freeman does exactly what she's supposed to do. Hold their ground, gets big at the vital moment. This is one nothing without her. Talked to Izzy before the game, and she's like, yeah, I was repping MTA. I'm like, oh, yeah, I forgot. In the Minnesota area, they call the Minnesota Thunder Academy MTA. She's been dynamic right off the start here. She's a problem, and Groff has been able to track her down, give her some pressure early, but gosh, she's got to have her running shoes on today. Dean, do you think this Notre Dame team's just too young to know they're supposed to be scared of the number one team in the country? Well, you know what I think is Notre Dame is basically kind of like Duke in the sense that they, you know, the difference is they don't get as many transfers, but what they do is they get young players that have the ability to turn pro after one year. And she's one of them. 
I know education is important, so she's probably going to come back, but she's pro ready and a lot of these other freshmen are pro ready. And so when you're pro ready to answer your question, Matt, yeah, they, they don't think about it. You know, age doesn't matter. Hopefully I answered it for you. No, that's, I think that's a brilliant answer. I'll be thinking about that for a while. When you're that good, age doesn't matter. I like the way you said that. Yeah. <laughs> well, you, I mean, Corbin Albert and Gatino could be with Notre Dame right now. They're both playing for PSG, one of the top clubs in the world. They actually are still eligible and could be playing for Notre Dame. And Albert with the game winning assist in the gold medal game against Brazil. While she still could have been a college soccer player. She had a fantastic Olympics, didn't she? Well, it, it, it gave you an idea of the vision of Emma Hayes because she really didn't have any caps, but yet Emma Hayes knew her quality, knew what she was doing at PSG, brought her on, and she was ready for the big moment over in France and obviously comfortable in France, so all of it works fine. Offside flag is up. I like the idea of playing into that dangerous area. That's well where you're going to find Oliaro more often than not. If you've been following along with the Duke women, particularly the times where I'm going to have the great pleasure of joining Matt Stradley in the booth, we have been tracking the miles. This looks like a game where the miles are going to increase mm -hmm. really for both teams, right? As Drew Lukes, the head of sports science for Duke women's soccer, has been tracking the mileage of every single player. We mentioned the wingbacks as Ella Haas, 187 total miles, and Mia Oliaro, 220 miles. That's a lot of miles. It really is. But you can feel the intensity of this one. Good move by the Duke Blue Devils. They play it out wide. Duke is in. Duke with a chance. Late tackle coming in. It will be a goal kick. Good opportunity for Duke on the far side. And of course, it's one of the wing backs that we spotlighted, Ella Haas. And the pass from Laguerre, I mean, it's a nifty little weighted pass. Right into Haas, left footed shot, just gets under it. Boy, when you're trying for that much power and you're, you're running as fast as you can, it's so hard to stay over the top of that ball. A senior from Orland Park, Illinois, a transfer from Northwestern, Oliaro. These are your wing backs, folks. Tucking inside. Laguerre. Oof. Laguerre, a few years back, was with Michelle Cooper on that U20 team. Cooper came back ready to go. Laguerre came back a little banged up, and it took a little bit, of, a little bit longer for her to kind of settle in. But once she has, she is just one of those players that, I think I've used this word before. I mean, she's exquisite on the ball. She just. Her technical and tactical ability, her passing ability, Matt Stradley, for the gear, awesome. Haas again. Haas cuts it back. Was looking for Lynch, Notre Dame. One back. Turning on it again, Laguerre. Another great pass. Haas with another chance. Down the end line. Lynch. Lynch dummies it. Probably in hindsight should have hit it, yet Duke still has it. One more drop, another chance for Haas, and Haas will let it roll out of bounds. It'll be a throw in coming for Duke. After that initial first six minutes that, gosh, the, the Irish really looked like they came to play. Duke starting to get more possessions, starting to get play into that final third. 
Lynch drops it back to Haas. Lynch with five goals and eight assists, sitting next to Megan Graham with nine goals and five assists. Walters, three goals and two assists. Haas, two goals, nine assists. Oliaro, five goals, nine assists. Bibar, one goal, four assists. Laguerre, one goal, five assists. This one dropped in front. Katie Groff on the back line, two goals and an assist. Cameron Roller, three goals, three assists. Nikki Chico, two assists. I don't know if I've ever seen anything like it where all 10 starters have pinball machine-like numbers, including the back three. You love it when your defense gets involved in the offense. I mean, Roller, when she gets into the box, is such an aerial threat. She dominates in her own box, and then she can go on corners and on some free kicks, get up. Oh, she's fun to watch in the air. Gear wins it back. Some pressure on that back line of Notre Dame. With Ellie Ospec coming in, that's something that I like that Notre Dame does. You know that frantic energy of the first 10 minutes. Well, let's get some fresh legs on after those 10 minutes have elapsed. I love that theory and that philosophy. Mark Krikorian used to always do that. He would have his best players not start but come off the bench. And Ospak with one goal and five assists. Lily Joseph with six goals and five assists. And they're not even starters yet. They'll play a great deal of minutes. I do feel like Mark Krikorian really kind of made that happen where, I mean, he had like three of his best players coming off the bench every game. Former Florida State. Top man. Thinking about the standings in the open, you know, one of the scenarios that I focused on after some great intel from our producer, Will Black, is Florida State could have to go to Stanford and then either team, right? Whoever wins that game then has got to get to carry North Carolina for a game a few days later. Notre Dame, Chukwu. Chukwu fighting for it. And back by Laguerre. Far side, Duke, watch Duke fill the lanes, looking for Graham, and it's handled there by Casica. Sonomo Casica, the freshman from St. Petersburg, Florida, nine games played, six goals allowed, .67 goals against average. She's a fantastic shot stopper. She's a good distributor. She does everything well. She's decisive on that line, but she's such a good shot stopper. They've got another good goalkeeper, and Atlee Olofsson, who has played five games, has a .20 goals against average, and is 4-0-1 on the season. The gear, back to, back to Chico. Oh, ball into Graham. And Kasika off the line, and she's got it. Decisive. Any hesitation, that's going to be Oliara walking it in. I love a decisive goalkeeper. You're not always going to be right, but if you're decisive, you're always going to have a chance. Dean trying to play it long to Izzy Engel. Now Duke will. Build it out of the back. The gear helping to connect the dots gets it to Chico. Chico Walters drops it back perfectly to Maggie Graham. And now here's the gear again. The gear keeping it simple, finding B bar. 
We won't say B-Bar's name as much as we'll say Haas, as much as we'll say Oliaro, as much as we'll say Graham, but B-Bar also plays a key role connecting with Laguerre for sure. The way that those two connect the lines, connect those wings into play, I don't know that you'd hear Haas, I don't know that you'd hear Oliaro if you don't have B-Bar, if you don't have Laguerre. Well said, Matt. Transfer from Harvard. Remember, the Ivy League didn't give that extra COVID year, so you've got really good teams coming out of the Ivy League in women's and men's soccer, players that have one more year, that want one more year of solid education. Duke is basically considered an Ivy League school based on their education with big-time athletics, and so that's a great pickup. And that's kind of the story. Notre Dame can't really use the transfer portal. They don't really take the classes in the same way. It's not always easy for Duke as well, but it particularly is easy for that fifth and final year for Dukes. And so Notre Dame's out there with all these freshmen, and Duke has these fifth-year players that also will be playing pro at the next level. B-Bar, little toe poke forward to Walters. Strong run coming again from Laguerre. What a presence. Oliaro. Oliaro. Mentioned it before, kind of a straight swap. Oliaro coming over from North Carolina. Migley coming from Duke over to North Carolina, all leading up to that game on Halloween night. Might be for all the marbles. I was going to trick or treat, but I mean, I guess yeah, that's going to be one to watch, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, you can sit out there with your pumpkin, but have have your eye on that one. It's on ACC Network Extra. I've already bought the costume. I'll just wear it to the game. Well, I'm not kind of, I'm definitely scared to ask what your costume is, but when you say it, I'm thinking that you're implying I need to ask. So <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and at the risk. Uh, oh, it's just Frankenstein. It's fine. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm okay. tall. I think I can pull it off. All right. Here. <laughs> it's on far side. Haas had it for a moment. Haas. At one point, it was going to be a twofer out of Northwestern as Meg Bodie, the sister of Tess Bodie, who was outstanding at Duke, and then would go on to have great success at the North Carolina Courage. She's now with Bay FC. They just beat the North Carolina Courage, and Tess Bodie was brilliant. Meg Bodie, last minute decision, went to UCLA. The way they advanced the ball. And it's through Lynch. Lynch is absolutely brilliant. There is Lynch. Footed shot handled there by Kaska. One thing Kaska's not doing, that's allowing scraps. Yeah, no rebounds. You're right. She's taking care of everything. Well said, Matt. Because. One thing we do know, if she does allow the scraps, Duke will pounce. Angle, an absolute handful. Five foot nine. Great speed. Long and lanky, can score goals in multiple ways. Obviously, she can score with her head, she can run it down, can hit it with both feet. And puts in a solid shift defensively as well. It helps Notre Dame win it back. Turned back over, though, by Duke. Graham to Oliaro. Calling for it is B-Bar. Wow, this is fun. This game is so entertaining. Graham trying to break the line. Oh, I love Graham's idea. She's like, all right, based on where the ball is, if I can get to it first, I'll just tap it over, play it into space, and the goal is open. But Kasica got there first. Yeah, LU, LU, 
Freeman bombs it long. And they'll bring it back to Kasica. That's Leah Plinky on the far side. One goal, one assist. Just a bit late from B-Bar. I like the call. So Leah Klinky drops it long. Matt, Chad Lampman kind of expects all of us to know everybody's wives, but my <laughs> wife's name is Leah Linky, so. It's kind of fun to say Leah Clinky, if you know what I mean. Oh yeah, no, that's I it, it's it's one of those names that flows. I like that. That's a great name. <laughs> that's hard. That's hard. It's spelled K-L-E-N-K-E, -E, but pronounced Clinky. Oliaro into space. Oliaro. All the way across. Nobody home. The crowd loving it. When you've won 12 in a row and you're absolutely blowing out teams, people pay attention. Nice crowd here on a Thursday night, particularly in front of us over on the broadcast side. Yeah, good look there by our crew. Senior night, as the seniors were recognized before the game, which I kind of dig, right? They get it out of the way, and then it's time to go play soccer and try to get a win. I, I like that. I don't like to wait around after the game to do all that pomp and, circ pomp and circumstance. And what if you lose? Then you're standing there on senior night sad with your parents? You got to walk? I don't, I don't like that. Notre Dame looking for Eng Engel. Z Engel, 11 goals, one assist. She's a problem, isn't she? Oh, man. She is. I mean, because she's got great size and the speed. Knows how to time her runs. I and mean, she hasn't been offside at all, right? No. Nope. She's brilliant in getting into those dangerous areas. Maggie Graham, who is just completely bought in for her last year. Drops it over to Waters, it's in front of him! The Duke Blue Devils have made it 1-0! Waters had the first touch at it. You said you can't spill it because Duke will make you pay. And when they do, Duke has the answer and it's Duke 1, Notre Dame 0, and Robbie Church is fired up. Oh, it's brilliance down the right side. Good run on. Gosh, Graham, so good. Calm, patient. Oh, what a weighted pass. Right across. Ella Haas. Oh, spilled the save. Just trying to get a piece on it. If you're, if you're clinky, you're coming up, you don't know. If you're Casca, you're just trying to get a hand on it, trying to push it into a not dangerous area, not enough on it. And Haas is way too clinical for that ball. Ella Haas. Three goals and nine assists. Came on the air talking about Engel. Engel within the first 30 seconds had a breakaway. And then probably another minute later, another breakaway that Freeman had to make a big save. Ella Haas talking about her and Mia Oliaro. Both of them have had great starts. And now Ella Haas has the first goal of the game for a team that just is scoring goals at a record pace. Blue Devils team can hurt you in so many ways. And so that was the big question for me, is how is Notre Dame going to handle all those threats? Back across, Walters. Fair Walters who had the shot. And because she had the shot, she will get credit for the assist. And we've got a change as Walters is going to come out. And coming into the game is Mia Minestrella. Minestrella also having 
a fantastic season off the bench. So it's not like Notre Dame's the only team that brings in players off the bench that are absolutely crushing it. Menestrella's a different type of player. A little bit more opportunistic. She's a clinical finisher, and she's not afraid to let one rip from outside of the box. Seven goals and three assists for that player right there. Last season with zero. And she's done that without starting a single game. Some people like to be that spark plug off of the bench, like to see kind of the pace of play, the way that play is going, and kind of come out and with fresh legs, kind of work yourself into the game quickly. Duke went up to Columbus, Ohio to play Lori Walker Hawks, Ohio State Buckeyes to start the season. They lost that game 1-0. Since then, they've won every game. They've outscored the opposition 46-6 to now with their 46 goal. Let me say that again, 46-6. to is that good? That's, I mean, it's not bad. <laughs> That's a, and they've never, and they haven't let a team score more than one against them all year, which is kind of crazy. Like, surely you're going to have two slip ups in a match at some point, right? They're just so clean. So many weapons. And they're even. Missing some key players, it hasn't mattered. Engel, Engel, good step back, Engel! With her 12th goal of the season. It's Duke one, Notre Dame one. Izzy Engel, the real deal. Well, it's nothing less than she deserves. She's been putting in work all night. Another opportunity this time. Look at the patience. She could have a right footed shot right here. Pulls it back. A oh, little bit of time and space on that left foot, and it's perfectly weighted. What a celebration for the rookie sensation, Izzy Engel. 12th goal of the season coming in minute 20 to tie this one up at one apiece. ACC women's soccer on display. Incredible pace, big time talent, excellent passing. Putting in the miles as Lindy Brown, the SID, passing that along, the referee getting in the way. So fairly poor, poor first touch, if I do say so. <laughs> Here's Islin Pexinar, that's the referee. Jason White on one side, Alex Tensi on the other. Jude Carr is your fourth official. Yeah, he's had better touches. Lynch. I know the fourth official, Jude, wouldn't treat it like a lead balloon out there. <laughs> Here's the deal, Duke's so dynamic. We've obviously had a blast with this front row seat, but Izzy Engel showed us right off the bat that she's every bit as dynamic. She's a brilliant player. She's fast, she's strong, she knows where to be, she knows when to be there, and she knows what to do when she gets there. I'm still in awe of the patience. A freshman, I mean, I would have, I would have understood with Groff closing her down, taking that right-footed shot, but she has the patience and confidence in her touch to have that little hesitation, drag it back to the left. Oh, and another one! Another one from Engel! She's got a brace, Izzy Engel, waiting. Remember I said she can score with her head, she can score with her left, score with her right. She's got two of those already, she'll point to the sky, and for the first time since Columbus, Ohio, I believe. Duke is trailing two to one. And this is the first time all season they've given up two, but oh, just a problem in the box. The timing on the cross, I mean, that is a pinpoint perfect cross. If you could, if you could just toss one up to me like that, I couldn't ask for anything more. 
brilliantly done. Nine assists for the freshman from St. Louis, Grace Restovich, finding the freshman from Minnesota, Izzy Engel, who has scored goal number 12 and 13. And Notre Dame with a 2-1 lead and a barn burner here. Like we said, to start the show, the sun might be setting, but you got to keep the lights on for the remainder of this ACC season because it is going to be electric, my man. It's a shot. This is the first time Duke's been down at Koskinen. Uh, they trailed for a little bit of time out at California. Looked like they were going to get out of that game with a draw late goal is what brought it back. But it's almost a stunned silence inside Koskinen right now. Maggie Graham to Laguerre. And Estrella with the goal open. Crowd kind of got into it, but Kasica had no problem tracking back. Kasica had left the goal to make a, himself a little bit more available for the pass, but the Notre Dame player did not realize. This will go over the top. Oliaro near post. Trying to sneak one by Kasica, but Kasica with the save, a corner kick coming. That's a brilliant save from Kasica. The shot's going to be coming to her left. A fantastic run. Nice right-footed blast, keeps it low. Hmm. Kaska, that's a quick left hand down to push it away. Good look there at Robbie Church. First game allowing multiple goals in a game this season. Obviously this last season of his career has been magical. And I told him before the game, I mean, he looks fantastic. I mean, you can tell like, he, He's already like starting to drink from the fountain of youth as he's thinking about that beach, as we mentioned before, one eye on the beach and one eye on a national championship and what will be his final season. What a, what a way to send off one of the true gentlemen of the game. I talked to a bunch of coaches throughout the year, and I don't think we've heard anybody say a negative word about Coach Church. Never, never, ever, ever. Lynch, that was all kinds of trouble. All kinds of trouble for Sonoma Kasica. Kasica's been strong in goal. Nice little lobbed ball in. Oh, that's tough as a keeper. You've got traffic all around you, and you're just trying to punch it anywhere. Nice cello is really close. Foul called against Duke. Got a goal against Roth, who's having herself a big time season, the fifth year out of Raleigh, North Carolina. Went to Leesville Road High School. It's down Tobacco Road here in the triangle. Notre Dame. Two goals from Izzy Engel. And Estrella has it taken away by Klinky. side for Notre Dame. Matt, you're on it again because, look, obviously Izzy Ingo is a special player, but the service from Restovich, her ninth assist to go with three goals was just perfect. And then Ingo headed it in. She's a special player. Uh, her ability to see passes maybe no one else can see. It's, it's, it's really special. Rastovich's ability out wide is picking out those spaces, those windows that 
I mean, to you and me, Dean, they don't even look like windows. Plinky. And a bomb at long. Angle's not out. Fantastic crew is going to try to figure out a way to maybe take a look at the Notre Dame bench. I saw a player kind of getting some attention from a trainer, and I think it might have been Engel. So hopefully she's all right. So we're hearing that we think it was Abby Mills that was hurt, so Engel just getting that break. Remember, Nate Norman talked about the fact that he didn't even like saying that he's got two starting forwards, right? He basically said he's got like three, four, five different mm -hmm. starters at the two forward positions. Here's Groff. Groff making that sacrifice as a couple defenders out for the season. So she's moving back to that three back system. Lynch has moved around quite a bit. Lynch and Groff, both great seasons. Maggie Graham, Maggie Graham. And a kick save and a beauty from Cassica. Keep this one 2-1 Notre Dame. Maggie Graham again, heads it. And it's gonna be a corner kick, corner kick coming for Duke. Nervous moments for the Irish. This is a brilliant pass. Absolutely brilliant. Graham's right footed, oh, kick save, it's brilliant. Just a great kick save. Casca had to get big, kick that right foot out. Casca, freshman from St. Petersburg, Florida. Shoot crest prep and into her hands. I can't believe there's already just less than 12 minutes remaining. This has been so much fun. It's been a rapid game. I mean, Matt, the NBA season has just started, and they don't move this quick. No, they really don't. Little back heel. Lynch, the recipient. Lynch surveys. Left-footed ball. Far side. Open for a run from Oliaro. Notre Dame going the other way. Martin Rennie down there doing some coaching from the sideline. One of Nate Norman's key assistants. And as I mentioned, the former head coach at the Carolina Railhawks before Getting the call up to Vancouver of Major League Soccer. There's Nate Norman, one of the all-time great guys. He played at Notre Dame with Chad Riley, the head coach of the men's team. As coming out of the game is Chukwu, the Canadian youth star. He put in his time. After playing with the Carolina Railhawks, he decided he would get into coaching. And sometimes you got to bounce around a little bit. It was Western Michigan where he spent the most time, then left. And when their head coaching job opened up, he got the job. And then when his alma mater needed a new head coach, he stepped right in. He's done a nice job in seven years where he has made Notre Dame a regular in the NCAA tournament. And a lot of times a regular in the ACC tournament, which is hard to do because they only take six. It's a bit crazy that it's harder to get into the ACC tournament than the NCAA tournament. <laughs> well, it's always been that way. They say that the ACC schedule is like playing the NCAA tournament, Maggie Graham offside. You know, I actually felt like she was closer to onside here than the opportunity that they didn't put the flag up, right? Where she had to make Casca make the kick save. I thought maybe she was offside on that play, Matt. To my eyes, this one looked about a step. It felt about a step offside. The, the first one, gosh, it was Lynch's pinpoint perfect timing on that, on that run. Spots the run from Graham and chips it over the top. It was perfectly timed. That time, a little bit out of sync. Duke now with 46 goals on this season. Notre Dame can score as well. They, with their two goals here from Izzy Engel, they've got 40 mm. on the season. Coming into the game, 
Duke averaging 20.5 shots per game. Notre Dame 20.4 so far in the game. Duke with nine shots. Notre Dame with five. Mm. Maggie Graham. Maggie Graham pushed to the ground and they're going to stop the clock. Might even give a card here. I think it has to be. It's not ideal. It's late. Graham gets to it first, plays it in. The contact's late, is stopping a promising attack. The official doesn't have an option. He has to throw the card. Card giving to Ellie Ospek, who, like I said, does not start, but very much considered a starter with one goal and five assists. Lynch over the ball. Notre Dame two, Duke one. Lynch. Lynch with the right foot, far post, back across and straight into the hands of Kasica. Good idea, free header, back post. You'd like to see a little more pace on the header, that one looping, catching practice for Kasica. Kasica now with five saves already. Foot save might be might be one of the better saves on the season for this Notre Dame team. I think it's going to be one of the more important saves on the season, especially if this result holds. Julia Sana Chapman will come in, the junior from San Jose, spent time at UCLA. Sana Cheva is in. Chico got rid of it just in time. As closing down was Ellie Hodson. Notre Dame. Izzy Engel. She's from Minnesota, where, by the way, the Minnesota Golden Gophers have the leading goal scorer in the country in Kaya Harper. Harper also from Minnesota. They can play some soccer in Minnesota. Plays it back. Aspect. Wow, really good trap. Cut back in by Hodgson. Individual defending from Chico is really solid. Could have gone wrong a couple of times. She was patient and waited for her chance to, to separate the attacker from the ball. Nikki Chico, the grad student, having her best season. Part of it is she's been healthy. Here's Laguerre. 
Laguerre's always been good. I feel like this is one of her better games, though. Oh, absolutely. She's very tricky on the ball. She's always been really smart moving forward, linking those lines, but the weight of these passes tonight have been fantastic. Two changes for Robbie Church. And Sana Cheva and Minestrella have come in. Six changes for Nate Norman. And Notre Dame fighting Irish. Corner kick coming. Chico. Chico. Good ball. And headed over by Graham. It's not in the scouting report for Chico is that she whips in wicked right-footed crosses, but that's exactly what she did. It deserved a, a bit of a better result. Unlucky. That ball whipped out just beyond the six. I mean, if you're going to cross the ball in, that's how you want to do it. It was a great ball, Matt. Well said. It's going to roll out of bounds as we are... Approaching three minutes and 30 seconds remaining in what has been an action-packed first half. A perfect bend on it. So Cheba headed it down in the midfield. One back by Notre Dame. One right back by Duke. Now Duke. They win and they turn. It's Clinky that's there. Gear. I'm oh. telling you, it's it's the best game I've seen her play. She drops it in and she's played really good soccer, so it's actually saying a lot. It's not like she's ever been bad. She is just really in good form. Kind of, to be fair, she's standing tall, which shows me she's healthy and ready for it. Big time presence in the middle of the field. The gear. Liaro, first to Graham. Stepped in by Groff. Groff trying to defend. And Chico with a hip check. It'll be a free kick opportunity, and Chico mm. may get a card. I think Chico's on the challenge, gets the ball. Unlucky to get the yellow. Chico. Comes across, wins the ball. Maybe I'm wrong. Yeah, it looked like a pretty solid hip check though with the ball. I just feel like I feel like she went body, then ball. And so Matt, you were right. She got to the ball, but she went through the body to get to the ball. You're absolutely right that that. That's not what you're supposed to do, and if it is a foul, then it has to be a yellow. It's the stopping of a promising attack. Clinky with the service. Freeman now on it. As you said, first time this year, Freeman has had to pick two out of the back of the net. Her senior night as well. So Cheva, Clinky there first for Notre Dame. Now Oliaro. Oliaro, another one of those players like Haas that can track the miles. And Estrella was offside. Flag is up. In those vital moments, you've got to make sure that you're not going a step early. She's done just that. That was a great job by the Notre Dame back three. Really great communication in a perfect line. B-Bar winning in the midfield. 
winning it in traffic. Now B-Bar, and try to drop it over the top. Still have the speed of Haas out there. Haas has the long goal for Duke. Easy angle, the freshman sensation with goals number 12 and 13 for Notre Dame. That's why it's Notre Dame 2, Duke 1. 20 seconds remaining here in the first half. They hadn't trailed since that game at Cal. They trail now. How will Duke respond? Duke has all the tools. Two fours, number two, North Carolina, number four. Chuggers getting it done at Virginia Tech, Florida State. They're always dangerous, of course. Now adding Stanford into the mix will make it interesting, Matt. I mean, this is a, such a deep conference. It's it's almost ridiculous, and, and you add in some of the, the travel questions. Uh, this is Duke when they went to California to play Cal and Stanford. It was the longest road trip that the women's team has ever had. Duke back out there in their home blues. Notre Dame in the green and gold with green socks. Lynch. Serves the ball all the way across, and it'll go off of Oliaro and out. It's a tough ball. It floats up, and Oliaro's trying to generate some power on it, whether it's to head it back across the six or, or try to sneak it inside the near post. She's got to generate all the power herself. Pressure on Cameron Roller, the sophomore. Got to remember, Cat Raider, Bailey Brewster, L. Piper, and Lauren Martino all out this season with season-ending injuries. So Roller in the middle of the three back center backs. Katie Groff on one side, Nikki Chico on the other. Pressure from Notre Dame. The Canadian, and they've scored again. Annabelle Chukwu with her third goal of the season. And it's 3-1 Notre Dame. It's just a brilliant goal snap. Rough-footed shot that curls into the near post. Oh, it's brilliant, Dean. Oh, it's, uh, the, the touch just to get it out. Duke doesn't close down quick enough. Oh, the smallest of windows to hit that shot through. It's closing so quickly. Nice little step over to find that iota of space. I don't know that you take that shot 100 times. I don't think you hit it any better than that. Annabelle Chukwu has made it 3-1 Notre Dame. Nate Norman was Really loose on our call. Loved when Nate was with the Carolina Railhawks. He was not just a fan favorite, he was a team favorite. All the teammates love Nate Norman. And Nate is well known for being very honest about the importance of mental health, including his own mental health. He's been open and verbal about it, so he makes sure that he elevates it for his team because he knows the importance of mental health and what a great example he is. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, and especially with, as it seems like every year the world's a little bit crazier than the year before, doesn't it? And to have that front of mind and, and to, to extol the virtues of it to your team, gosh, that's somebody you want to play for, isn't it? Indeed. He played for the Carolina Railhawks in 2008 and then Wanted to get into coaching. Went to Covenant College. Won 13 games in his first year. Then went to Miami to be the assistant on the women's side. Then Western Michigan in 2011. Became the head coach in 2012. In 2013, he took Western Michigan to the second round of the NCAA tournament. In 2015, he was the MAC Coach of the Year and MAC Tournament Champion. Then he went to Liberty 
for one year in 2016 and was the Big South Tournament champion where he won 14 games just one year because Notre Dame needed an assistant. That's his alma mater. That's where he loves. Notre Dame's got a strong name. He's assistant just one year and then 2018 became the head coach. Just took him his second year to make it to the second round of the NCAA. He did it in 21. He made it to the Elite Eight in 22. He made it the second round a year ago, finishing with a 16 final ranking. In 22, he was the ACC Coach of the Year. Nate Norman. Offside, Offside Notre Dame. It's the first time tonight for them. Clinky. Haas. Haas has won. Trying to drop it over and send out of bounds as it will stay with Duke. on the ball is brilliantly strong. You're not going to push her off the ball. She's got blazing speed. She's clever. You saw the step over to get space. She is I mean, as, as absolute of a show as we've seen from Engel. Boy, Chukwu is fantastic as well. Back by Notre Dame. The crowd a little stunned by the fact that in less than two minutes to start the second half, they get that third goal. Lynch. Lynch with a smoke! An absolute rocket goal! Pulls one back, and now it's Notre Dame three and Duke two. Wasn't clean in the lead up. The ball's just kind of into an open space, plinking off of a couple of players. Lynch sees a spot, runs up. Gosh, you give her that kind of a lead up, bends it. <laughs> Right around Kasica. Duke needed something, and a Lynch absolute belter is a good one to have. Belter, banger, galazzo, all those words work, Matt Stradley. And it's 3-2. Devin Lynch scored or assisted in her first eight starts of the season, which was the second longest streak in Duke history. And it's the sixth goal of the season coming in minute 51. Do not step away from your ACC network extra screen. Oi, oi, oi. Groff. Through most of this matchup, you've seen Oliaro come up very central. She's usually a lot wider. And Estrella. Closed down, but it'll stay with Duke. Lynch fitting that she gets the goal. She has had an outstanding game. Great motor. Good ball. Haas was there. Lynch serving dimes. Almost too clean. Haas would like that one back, I'm sure. They could have tied it right there. It would have been all level. Oh, we should have tied it right there. Oh, it's bent well. Oh, unlucky. It bounces up. Just misjudged the height did Haas. Wow, she was calling for it. And then Lynch 
Put it right on her left foot, too. Offside. Or no, out of bounds, my bad. It'll be a throw in. Ella Haas scored the first one. Brace would have tied it. Still plenty of time. What a game here, folks. What a game. 12 shots for Duke, seven for Notre Dame. Duke's put seven on frame. Notre Dame's put five. Notre Dame has made five saves. Duke has made two. Still loose. Graham over to Lynch. Lynch is everywhere. Lynch now back to Haas. Haas dancing with it. And Haas will earn a throw in. Lynch got her start after the Cat Raider injury. She took that attacking role. And she got a point in their first eight matches on the start after that. Too long for Mia Oliaro. Oliaro has notched assists in six straight matches coming into this one. Duke's goals are assisted by Walters and Mia Minestrello for Haas and Lynch. Engels first go, Chukwu and Mills with the assist. Her second goal from Grace Restovich, who put it on it right on her head. And then Chukwu's unassisted. Here's Haas. Back over left foot from Lynch. Good cut back. Back across. Open and in. Just like that, we are tied. in the crowd on this, the Oliaro, nice little cutback. And the cross is just about perfect off the fingertips and Menestrella wasn't gonna miss that. Nice little right-footed tuck in. Her eighth goal of the season coming off the bench. Might be the biggest goal of the year for her. Oliaro's now not assists, assists in seven straight matches. Meanwhile, Menestrella with eight goals all off the bench. She had two against Stephanie Golan's Missouri team. I think they're going to look to see if it was touched in an offside position. <laughs> because once Minestrella made contact with it, I think it would be harsh. I see what Martin Rennie, so Martin Rennie's down there. You do see a Duke player. Mm -hmm in front of Minestrella. Right, so he comes in off the goalkeeper and in an offside position, but not involved in the goal as Haas. I say you count that. I think you have to. I mean, not in the eye line of the keeper. Not really materially in on the play. So if the refs are looking at this, she's onside at the point of the ball's played. Which doesn't matter though, Matt, as you know, because yeah. what's going to matter here is after it is touched by the talented goalkeeper, Kasika, does Haas affect the play? Haas is clearly offside. I don't think she affects the play. And there it is, the goal counts. Yeah. I think that's got it right. I think you explained it well, and I agree well. <laughs> That's why I love working with you, my man. <laughs> I mean, Haas will even admit she was offside, but she did not drag a defender. She did not affect the goalkeeper's sight. And it's 3-3, and Robbie Church liked the explanation from the official. Reminding you again, it's Islin Pexenar. What a game. 
Notre Dame scores early to start the second half to make it 3-1. And Duke comes storming back with the goal in the 52nd minute. Devin Lynch from Mia Minestrello. And then Mia Minestrello assisted by Mia Oliaro. And guess what? Devin Lynch will also get an assist. Minestrello. Eight goals off the bench. The Mia's room together as Minestrello rooming with Mia Oliaro. Minestrello's story incredible. Tough freshman year where the doctors actually removed three feet of her small intestine. Gosh. Yeah. <laughs> she arrived in Duke. She had to have emergency surgery for blockage right before preseason practice started. This is Haas. Overlapping run. Graham Haas likes to send it in with her left foot. Finally back to her normal self is Mia Minestrello, and that includes eight goals. She's a cliff jumper. As you do. What's that? I said as you do. As you do, yeah. yeah. As a junior at Redondo Union High School, you know, a lot of it is about their ECNL and their youth teams. Notre Dame looking to take the lead back again, and it's handled there by Freeman. One more line on Minestrella, a junior at Redondo Union High School. She had 33 goals and 14 assists in 21 matches. That's in one season. That's unbelievable. Graham's making a run, Graham, oh! She was there, Haas saw it, we saw it, Matt. Everything but the finish, Minestrella back over again. Pitch back up, B-bar. Look at that pressure forcing the turnover. Such a good cross, Haas. Almost too good, little behind. That's a tough, if if Graham gets this right, it may be the goal of the year. Going behind you to try to direct it on goal is a brutal skill. The gear had it for a moment. Taken back by Notre Dame, though. That was Charlie Codd. Lynch back on it. Lynch, another perfectly weighted ball. And Lynch is going to get it back. Lynch will survey. Lynch. Right foot, left foot as well. We talked about angle. Lynch, man, she can hit him with both feet. So here comes Grace Restovich, who had an assist. Chukwu, who scored goal three, now is going to come out. Restovich back in there. Another thing about Devin Lynch, I've heard that you don't want to find her on a pickleball court because she's also extremely good at that as well. That does not surprise me. She looks like a competitive person. Turning in. Trying to find Graham. Picked up by Haas. Haas. Laguerre wanted it. Haas. Lynch, Lynch! Had a rocket shot earlier, tried to do it again. A little more difficult, no run up. You got to generate all the power yourself. And when you're generating that power, the tendency is to lean back to kind of use your body as a pendulum. And when you do that, you get under it. Now 16 shots for Duke. Eight of them on frame, seven for Notre Dame, five on frame. Lynch is fouled. That'll be a free kick opportunity for the Duke Blue Devils. 
Just first touch, splitting the double team. You have to pull her down. You had to. She's through. She's going to make a pass. She's going to score a goal. It was the right play. Devin Lynch, who won the free kick, talented family. Her father, Art, played soccer at Columbia. Her brother, Sean, played at Northwestern. Her brother, Colin, played at Ohio State and Case Western Reserve. Lynch. And Lynch is going to earn a corner kick. It's a tantalizing ball, one that if you're the keeper, you're going to want to come out for. Kasica going against the flow of play. You've got to either decisively punch it out or field it cleanly. She punches it out. I, I like that play from Casca through the contact with her own teammate. That's the danger when you come off your line there. Corner kick for Duke. Looking for Groff. It'll fall to Haas. Haas rips it in there. Roller. And it's going to come back. Let's talk about some of the services from Duke's back line. You had Chica whipping a nice right-footed cross earlier. This roller's left-footed near post cross nearly finds joy. They'll play on Minestrella. Minestrella looking to find Lynch. Matt, you say a lot of smart things, but one of the things you said about Lynch, you said that's a tantalizing ball. I, I feel like every service she makes, whether it's on a set piece or in the run of play, her ability to drop back when they need support outside of the 18 and drop balls in, every ball she serves to me is tantalizing. I love that word choice for, for Lynch. We've got a foul here for Duke. If they're going to call that foul. That's Chico. She's on a yellow. I'm not sure how you call that without it being stopping a promising attack. Nordine wants it too. She's also the last defender. Well, Roller kind of did spin off shoulder to shoulder. Notre Dame's with you, Matt. The, the, yeah, Nate Norman, yeah, pulled down. They've got a legitimate argument. The only thing I will say is Roller rolled off the shoulder. Nate probably doesn't have the benefit of seeing that. Oh, they, they're going to look at it. Uh-oh. I mean, you might be right. I'm going to go with Roller rolling off of the attacking player with Chico stepping up and Roller being there. It would have to be, uh, uh, well, the distance does help slightly, but it'd have to be a dog so red, you can't go back and give a yellow on a review. Hey, Church fired off, Dean. Okay, so Roller was deeper than I thought. It comes off the... Let's look for ways that this couldn't be a red. Comes up... Ooh, could be caught a handball. Off hand the ball. arm, yeah. Comes up off the arm. If they just call the handball, then they that's where they'd stop, I think. Yeah. The contact comes after that. It does come up off the arm. Roller ended up deeper behind than I saw it in real time. I'll be honest with you. It could be any of three calls, and I'd have to say that he's probably got it right. I think if you're Duke, you're hoping that this handball is what's being spotted on the call.
Kwe Engel is just a handful, is she not? I mean, just an absolute handful. She's a nightmare if you're if you're trying to defend, if you're marking up how you want your defense to handle somebody. I don't know what you say about Engel. She's so talented. She's so skilled. She's so strong, fast, good with the ball at her feet, good when the ball's not at her feet. <laughs> Are, you Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? It's going to be a red card. Robbie Church's reaction. Yep. We're going to have a substitution. So after the review, Chico will get the red. Here's the video review rules, and you can see it highlighted determined if a red card should be issued. <laughs> Matt, you were on it from the beginning. That was your call. If you're a Duke fan, you're not happy with me, and I get it. <laughs> Because if I'm a Duke fan, I'm not happy right now either. I think he got it right. Chico is the last defender. The contact, he ruled a foul. If that's a foul, it has to be a red. Oh, there's a lot of time left, too. With 28 minutes remaining. Now Chico, the night is over. Of course, what you need to remember as well is Sunday, the game in Winston-Salem against Tony Deleuze's Wake Forest Demon Deacons. Chico will not be available. And that back three has really been in rhythm mm -hmm. for the Duke Blue Devils. So we'll see how they reshape things. Right now it looks like they've pulled Graham back to be sort of that right center back. Vocal after that call that went her way. I think she was asking for a card. Oh, definitely. Graham is looking for Minestrella. So it's going to be Groff, Roller, and Graham, the back three. And a foul call against Duke. It'll come back to Notre Dame. At this point, that's, you, you keep your opinions to yourself, and you're not trying to draw any ire, any other cards. Um, I'm not so sure about that on second viewing. I think there was a legitimate attempt to play the ball by Notre Dame. I think it was just trying to get lunging into the space without any intent to play. I'm, I would be okay with a no call there. And Estrella drops it back, goes over the head of Laguerre to Haas. Haas back to Laguerre. Laguerre has wanted that ball to return to her. It does there. Now Minestrella will get it out wide. Oliaro. Oliaro. And into the hands of Casica. It's tough when you try to get the space to get your cross off. When you're that deep, you really got to whip your foot around the outside of the ball to get the bend back to the six to where Casca doesn't want to come off her line to grab it. Duke will play the rest of the game down a player after Chico sent off with a red after the review. Much to the dismay of Robbie Church, about as animated and visually upset as I've ever seen the man. Right? Is that fair? I haven't seen him like that that I can recall. Haas. Oh, 
pass is taken down. It'll be a free kick for the Duke Blue Devils. This is prime Lynch territory, isn't it? <laughs> it's the first person I thought of. Yeah. It's interesting because Groff is over there as well. Those two. She can lace it too. Can't yeah. She? So many similarities between those two. It's just fascinating. I've enjoyed covering both of them. There's the whistle. Lynch took something off. Goes off the crossbar. And they'll say it was touched. It'll be a corner kick. What a player. Just misses tucking under the bar. And I think Hasek's touch on it is the reason why I think that dips in. You imagine down to 10. Yeah, that's absolutely what happened. Kaska had to get a touch on it. That's dipping under the bar. Wow. And Estrella. See the corner kick stat line there. Five corners for Duke, just one for Notre Dame. Here's Lynch. Lynch hitting the crossbar. B bar. Oh. Great turn from B bar. And the flag is up. As fast as Walters is, she can give a half step to that back line and still be just fine. This one rolls all the way back. I think about Lynch's shot right there off the crossbar. The Duke men's soccer team led by John Kerr Jr. who was a key part of that 86 national championship team and he won the Herman Trophy as the country's best player. Michael Brady was a big time player for American University. I call them the Silver Foxes. If you go to their practice, those two will play the crossbar game. And I'm telling you legit, they will hit like above 50% from 25, from 30. I mean, I'm, I'm talking about from the penalty spot. They will hit the crossbar from 25, 30 consistently. The two silver foxes for the Duke men's team, which is number 10 in the country, enjoying the fact that the Duke women's team, the number one team in the country. Duke's pretty good in a lot of things. Mm -hmm. Pretty awesome that their football team is now six and one. You gotta believe Coach Shire will have the basketball team trying to chase down yet another natty. Kara Lawson, Duke. the Duke Blue Devil women's basketball team. Love, love covering that team. And the way they fight and scrap and, I mean, they, they're gonna be a tough out. You love a team that has an identity. A, a team that has something to, that hangs their hat on, that knows who they are and what they are. Of course, John Donowski with the men's lacrosse team. Rich Young with the softball team. Pollard with the baseball team. I mean, pretty much need to name all the coaches because Duke's good at pretty much at everything. Haas. Haas. Back across. Look wickedly dangerous down this left side. Thought you might see the left footed shot coming after the first touch, but she really wanted to get that ball across goal. So B bar. Duke's had a little bit more of the ball since the red card from Chico. That's off the crossbar. They've had two. Graham low. Big time save. I think another kick save coming from Kasika. Remember, Duke's playing down a player. They've had two off the crossbar. Kazika with a kick save. And Duke's going for it here. 
Good header on frame. Oh, and the shot low. Graham nearly down a player. <laughs> Duke up one. This is Casca's got an MVP performance tonight. Which is hard to do. I mean, when you've got Izzy Engel on your team to outshine somebody that, that's dominant. I think Casca's night's been beyond spectacular. Seven saves for the freshman. certain why that is not a corner there, Matt Stradley. I couldn't tell you. I mean, I think on the fall, it was clearly off a Notre Dame player. Yeah, I don't know. Perhaps the, the touch not seen in the, in the clashing of the bodies. Now, perhaps after seeing some of Duke's best play, minus a player, now it's like maybe to remember they have an extra player and try to figure things out. They play it forward. They just need to be patient. They need to get some good possession. They had a bit of it, and then they rushed it, trying to get through the lines quick. Back by Notre Dame. Matriano for the Irish. That's Izzy Engel. Now here's where you can grind it down, hold possession, move it left, right, make that defense work, get those tired legs kicking. Good turn by Restovich. Restovich has one helper in the game. Yes. Top of the 18 cleared. Engel. Wanted the corner. Doesn't get it. That is a freshman with 13 goals on the season. Minnesota Thunder Academy, MTA. You need to see a birth certificate because something doesn't seem right. <laughs> There's Nate Norman with Martin Rennie standing by. Push from behind from Haas. They were caught a foul. Haas pushed. And if I'm Notre Dame, I'm fine with taking as much attention onto Haas's uh, contact as I can. If I can get her a frustration yellow, okay. Because she's been killing it down the left side. Croft read perfectly, intercepted perfectly. Really neat trap. Phoebe Goldthwait is in there wearing the number five jersey, the sophomore from Durham, North Carolina, Durham Academy, where she played for Susan Ellis, who is still there. Susan Ellis, a North Carolina graduate, she won a bunch of national championships, but she also was the assistant coach for the original Carolina Courage that won the WSA title back in 2001. Played against her sister, who plays for Boston College. Initially, Wake, but just transferred to Boston College. We're going to start to see a more physical, grinded out type of game. I think that's going to be a necessity for Duke as these legs get more and more tired. 15 minutes remaining. Morgan Roy. Roy first times it. Ball through. One back by the Irish. Angled pass. Restovich will have it at her feet. 
One back, though. That's Goldthwaite, who won it initially. Now Duke dealing with a little bit of pressure. Duke with 21 shots to just eight for Notre Dame. And we have a 3-3 tie. Leg is up. That's by design. Roller takes a step forward at the perfect time to draw that flag. Prior to the match, as we mentioned, Duke honoring fifth-year senior Leah Freeman, who's got a couple saves in this game, as well as Bailey Brewster and senior Kelly Wilson. Just the second time in Duke program lore that they've opened ACC play with a 7-0 record. They did it in 20, well, they did it this year, and they did it in 2017. 2017, they made it to the College Cup. 2015 as well. 2011 and, and 1992. Erwin Van Benekom, the assistant coach during that 15 and 17 time. I was able to catch up with him when they, his Indiana team took on Minnesota, the number one goal scorer in the country that Engel's going to try to chase down, and that's Kaya Harper. Cheeky cheer from the Coskin Stadium crowd on the on the whistle. They may feel hard done by, but I feel like the officials have got it just about right tonight. Walters has just been sprinting since she's gotten out. Won the ball well. Haas back to Groff. Half out of bounds right in front of Robbie Church. Robbie Church said that's okay. They had about 28 minutes to deal with. They've dealt with the plurality of it. That's the majority of it. But it's going to be a long 12 minutes, Dean. Waiting to get into the game. Chukwu with that turn that Matt Stradley just mentioned. Over the top. Oh! Freeman, as she may get a red here too, with a point to the spot. I don't think you can give a red. It's going for the ball. It'll be a, it should be a yellow and a penalty. If it's outside of the box, yeah, probably another red. But since it's inside the box, and they're going to give a penalty, she's going for the ball. It's a yellow. It's a penalty. He hasn't even given a yellow, so. Dame. Pretty sure this is Leah Clinky. Leah Clinky. Oh, off the post and does not fall. It's been that kind of season for Duke. Clinky clinks it off the post and it's still 3 3. Just a moment. It's a good plant. It's. The deception's done. Sent Freeman the wrong way. All that's left to do is tuck it inside the post. Go 
kick coming. They'll push it wide to Oliaro. Life for Duke. Certainly, I mean, I wouldn't be in any hurry to restart this, would you? Playing down a player for now 18 minutes with 10 left to go. I'm, I'm taking every second I can. Yeah, I mean, I guess so. I, I just feel like Duke just believes that they've got a special team no matter what the circumstances are, Matt Stradley. And look, when the card, after the card happened, Duke had more of the game. Notre Dame did earn the PK. Right call, and also great breakdown by you. Not a red card, but... Plinky misses it. And so to answer your question, I think Duke's going to go for it. So they'll lose, use a little bit of the time, but they're going to go for it here. B-Bar sent in. And a little bit of a collision. All right, let's go to work, Matt. Take a deep breath and then get ready to go. A second half recap. Nope. Hang on. Keep that breath. <laughs> Notre Dame went too quick rolling it out as we were ready to roll out all the second half goals for you here. It has been a special second half. I mean, special first half. It's been a great game, sir. It's been a blast of a game. You've seen some absolutely brilliant goals. Uh, Duke's down a player, look to be in danger. They've had some amazing scoring chances down a player. Notre Dame just needs to have that bit of clinicalness about them. That's not it. Freeman has it. Freeman on her senior night did not complain when they pointed to the spot. Would have been a tough complaint. <laughs> we all saw what happened. I mean. This is Robbie Church's final season. He is hoping to get some more home games. ACC and NCA tournament. Notre Dame. The curve ball just a little deep. All right, Matt, let's go to work and break <laughs> everything down here in the second half. Well, it started off great for Notre Dame, didn't it? Up 2-1. Well, why don't we have just a little bit of Jean Wu? Oh, it's a brilliant goal. Pending left footer. Gosh, Devin Lynch, Thunderfoot, the foot blessed by Thor, and a sneaky little goal from Minestrella to make it 3-3. Oh, dire moment for Duke, the red card coming out of the back pocket after a video-assisted review. <laughs> I'll catch you all up. I, I'm out of breath. How are you? <laughs> and, and Leah Klinke, Missed your penalty kick. Went off the post and the wrong way. Otherwise, it would be 4-3 Notre Dame. This match really has added everything. I think. <laughs> Needed an intervention in B-bars there. Haas. Haas dancing with it. The heir apparent to Haas has not got into this game yet, but she will play a ton as Sophia Recupero. Phenomenal left-sided player. This is pretty good ball. Izzy Engel, Izzy Engel looking for the hat trick. Giant stop from Freeman again coming off the line to get big. Notre Dame asking all the questions in the last two to three minutes. Boy, Freeman got out so quick. <laughs> 
Izzy Engel, who did have a hat trick in just her second game of her career at Sanford. Here's the corner kick. Sent out of there as we still have plenty of time. Now we've got a whistle. With a Duke player down, they'll call for the training staff. It's Graham. Line. Haas was already down, so next thing you know, Graham is right next to her. So Graham wants to get right back in there. I can't think of a time where I've seen Robbie Church this agitated. They'd like to do a free sub. They're going to do a free sub here. It's a phenomenally competitive contest for Robbie Church's last regular season home game, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Phenomenal. They will get the free sub because of the injury to the head as Sam Bodenstein, the sophomore from Illinois. She's done a good job slotted in on the back line. Usually when Cam Roller comes out of the game, You'll see Bodensteiner Marshall as the, the center of those back three. Headed by Roller. Bodensteiner, tough as nails. Defended perfectly. They knew the scouting report. be a long eight minutes for Duke unless they can wrest some possession away from Notre Dame. That's a five up there, Matt. Five minutes. What are you going to say? <laughs> Man, I get my glasses back on. Oh, I'm wearing them. That's the problem. Let me pull them down over my face. Catch Matt Stradley, <laughs> improv. Chicago, New York, LA, check your schedules. Other Dame's asking all kinds of questions. So far, Duke's bent not broken. They've had the answers. These questions keep coming. Morgan Roy, dribbles into trouble. Haas sends it long. He's looking for Minestrella. Now it's Notre Dame's Matriano who got it started. Notre Dame into the 18, Engel. A really tough angle. And Maggie Graham gonna come back in probably for Bowden's time. So Bowden Center, who had a sister Jane that was a member of the St. Benedict's women's tennis team. Graduated this past spring. Golden Center, by the way, as she heads to the bench, big time basketball player, too. I like those players that play multiple sports. I'm with you. Walter's coming back in. She's going to provide that little bit of spark, that little bit of pressure right at the top. Try to push Notre Dame into acting quicker than they want to. Three thirty.
throw in. Nice trap by Notre Dame. Chuku, like you said, scored early to make it 3-1 Notre Dame. Notre Dame, oh, there it is. Freeman with the save. Oh, another save. Back to back from Freeman on her senior night to keep it 3-3 down a player. Now, Matt Stratley, Matt Stratley, I will say yes. They want to hang on and, and keep the point given the circumstances. Freeman trying to do it by herself. Flag stays down. The Duke fans don't like it. Robbie Church still fired up. Freeman with back-to-back -back game saving saves there to keep this one at 3-3. The first one was good. We clear in the box. Good run of nice left footed shot. The second one's even better. Spotted the danger. Diving. That is. <laughs> if you if I tell you on the surface, you're diving at somebody kicking the ball as hard as they can towards the net. That seems like self-destructive behavior, but that saved the game. Did save the game. 61st minute. Chico set off with a red card after they took a look at it. Fighting Irish. Trying to end one of the most amazing runs in Duke women's soccer history. They have not lost or tied a game since their opener against the Ohio State Buckeyes. They may take a tie here. I think. Given the way that the last eight minutes have gone, I think if you are offered a tie, if you do, I think you take it. Nate Normans, fighting Irish, trying to hang on. with a chance. Open for the corner kick, won't get it. And let's see if Notre Dame's gonna send it long and try to take their last chance. Who's gonna win it first? Oliaro to Graham. Get back Eight. off by Notre Dame. Graham tries to close it down. Notre Dame gonna send it long. And what a game. Final score, Robbie Churches. Duke Blue Devils, Nate Normans, Notre Dame Fighting Irish. They had a few words down there with the final score 3-3. I mean, what a game. It had